Hello, I'm Mark from Moonstone Publications. Welcome to this overview of some of the stories we've covered over the past week. But first, please hit the subscribe button and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Coming up in this week's update, the pension fund's adjudicator mulls tough action over unpaid contributions. A medical scheme proposes an average increase of more than 12% for next year. Life insurers pay out almost 300 billion rand in the first six months of this year. A CISA flags problematic proposed amendments to the two-part legislation. The two-part system is driving a shift in how members engage with their funds. The tribunal rejects a debarred advisor's defense for sharing client information. And the FSCA says FSPs have a statutory duty to combat regulatory exam fraud. The pension funds adjudicator is calling for greater accountability from retirement fund trustees in addressing the non-payment of contributions by participating employers. The officer's latest annual report shows that complaints about the non-payment of contributions and withdrawal benefits accounted for 84% of finalized cases. The adjudicator, Mubongo Lukamani, told the Institute of Retirement Funds Africa conference this week that her office has been called to Parliament to explain the non-payment crisis. She said accountability should not rest solely with employers. One of the recommendations her office will make to Parliament is the introduction of personal liability for trustees. BestMed, South Africa's fourth largest open medical scheme, has announced an average contribution increase of 12.75% for next year. This is a notable rise from the 9.6% increase seen in 2024 and is the highest hike among the country's top five open schemes for the upcoming year. BestMed members will see an average benefit limit increase of 4.6%. The scheme said the contribution increase for next year should be seen in the context of its average contribution increase of 7% over the past five years, which is slightly below the market average. Life insurers paid almost 300 billion rand in claims and benefits during the first half of this year, according to statistics released by the Association for Savings and Investment South Africa. There was a modest 1.7% growth in recurring premium risk policies during the period, which CISA said was a positive development considering the difficult economic climate. But it expressed concern that about 4.3 million recurring premium risk policies lapsed in the first half of this year. This means that millions of South Africans and their beneficiaries are now left with little to no risk protection. CISA is advocating for amendments to the Revenue Laws Amendment Bill, warning that certain retrospective provisions could render some retirement funds non-compliant with the two-part legislation. CISA told Parliament this week that the latest iteration of the Amendment Bill could inadvertently create complications. It has two main areas of concern regarding the retrospective nature of the provisions in the latest bill. The first is the conditions that automatically exclude members of Provident Preservation Funds, who were 55 or older on T-Day, from the two-part system. The other is the seeding date for members of Provident Funds and Provident Preservation Funds who opt into the system. The two-part system has dramatically reshaped members' perceptions of retirement savings, transitioning them from a distant dream into a more tangible reality. Andrew Davidson, the head of institutional business at Old Mutual Multi-Managers, says the system is a game-changer, fostering a sense of real ownership among members over their retirement savings and enhancing their engagement with funds. However, this engagement has a downside. When members see their savings fluctuate, particularly when values drop, they might become anxious and push for more conservative investment strategies. 
The Financial Services Tribunal has dismissed the defence of a debarred risk advisor who justified sharing confidential client information by claiming it was necessary to validate her remuneration to a potential employer. Nedbank said the advisor had sent emails containing sensitive client data to an employee at PSG Wealth Financial Planning, a rival firm. The advisor contended that sharing the information was essential for her job application with PSG. She insisted that no harm had come to Nedbank's clients as a result of her action. The tribunal found that her rationale for sharing the client information was unacceptable. The FSCA says FSPs have a statutory obligation to help the authority combat the growing problem of phase regulatory exam fraud. Moonstone, the sole FSCA-approved institution for administering REs, has warned about exam fraud. Deputy Commissioner Catherine Gibson issued a communication emphasising how FSP should verify the authenticity of RE certificates. She says it is insufficient for an FSP to dismiss and deregister representatives who submit a fake or forged certificate. The Phase Act makes it clear that FSPs are obliged to debar reps whose misconduct means they no longer meet the fit and proper requirements. That's all we have for this week. You can read these stories and many more on our website, moonstone.co.za. Until next time, here's wishing you all the best from the team at Moonstone Information Refinery.